every single entrepreneur on TRT will tell you that HRT, whether that's cookie cutter or HRT plus or moderate steroid cycle, was game changing regarding their entrepreneurship because. Vigor Steve here. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Nootropic Stack Deep Dive Video Series, where we're not only going to discuss nootropics, but also over the counter supplements, performance enhancing drugs, cognitive enhancing medications, particular diet strategies for the best possible cognition and productivity, training recommendations so you don't have to waste away in a gym and save some of your energy for the actual work that needs to take place if you're an entrepreneur, and general recommendations for best practices so you can make as much money as you possibly can. And if you're not an entrepreneur, you're not self-employed, you're still going to university trying to chase that degree so you can work for somebody else. I get it. We all go through this phase, work for three to five years, figure out what's wrong with the business in your particular fields, learn how to patch the holes, then go self-employed so you can bank on your expertise solo. Okay. A lot of recommendations in this video regarding particular practices. Stay tuned. There's going to be a multitude of different videos. In this video, I just want to lay the foundation, the basics, best practices. Subscribe now if you're not subscribed yet, because we're going to go into over-the-counter supplements and the performance enhancing drugs and the medications a little bit later on in this video series. But this video is just for the basics so you can get started. But before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Didn't I just mention that? And look at my subscriber count. Don't be late to the party, buddy. We're almost at 100,000 subs already. It's too late for you to say that you're an early adopter of the Vigor Steve YouTube channel. But if you join in later than this, the bull run has already started and you'll be entering when the smart money is looking to sell, right? So make sure you get your entries because otherwise you're going to be late and you won't make as much money as you possibly can, right? The deep dive video series is just getting started. Subscribe now so you can watch all of them. Right? And when you do make your money, consider supporting the channel by joining either the YouTube or Patreon memberships where you can vote for upcoming deep dives or join the weekly vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday, a super flood of super chats, but luckily it's private for an hour so you can ask your questions patiently. All right, so let's get started. For the sake of audience retention, let's just proceed straight into the performance enhancing drugs and whatever else we have time for will follow after that. Don't worry. Let's start with cookie cutter hormone replacement therapy protocols, which ultimately brings you to the top of the masculine reference range. Let's say, give or take 1100 nanograms per deciliter on your total testosterone levels. Every single entrepreneur on TRT will tell you that HRT, whether that's cookie cutter or HRT plus or moderate steroid cycle was game changing regarding their entrepreneurship because not only does testosterone replacement therapy improve your productivity and cognition. It also improves your general state of well-being, your libido, and your energy levels, right? So now everything is in place for you to be as productive as possible. And anywhere towards the top of the reference range or slightly super physiological would be a major benefit to you. I can attest to this. I've been off HRT for nine months now. And guess what? My productivity is not where I want it to be. I'm getting all my work done. But the additional motivation to do extra work and work into the late hours simply isn't there. So let's get started with cookie cutter HRT, starting with testosterone, any ester and ester of your preference can be propionate, cypionate, enethate, and the canoate, whatever you prefer. So 25 milligrams to 35.7 milligrams subcutaneous daily for the most stable serum concentrations. If you want to go with three times per week administrations, that can be anywhere between 58.3 milligrams up to 83.3 milligrams for a total of 175 milligrams to 250 milligrams testosterone of any ester per week. This will probably bring you to the top of the reference range or somewhere super physiological. Could be 1500 nanograms per deciliter, could be 2000 nanograms per deciliter. I don't know what your muscularity and your overall training intensity is like, but this, generally speaking, will bring you somewhere towards the top of the reference range, whereas most men feel best and get the most motivation, the most libido, and the most dopaminergic signaling out of it. Yes, testosterone is directly correlated with your dopamine levels. Dopamine is high, testosterone levels are high, and when testosterone levels are high, dopamine levels and thus motivation sky high as well. But if you've never used hormone replacement therapy, please do so under medical supervision if you have the chance. If you live in the United States and you want to go with an excellent patient care coordinator, look no further than Merrick Health. 
I've got discount codes and links down below. But if you want to do self-prescribed HRT, stay tuned. You might learn something new. And I have several videos about HRT. Do yourself a favor and search the channel, please. And the next thing you can look into is optimizing your neurosteroid levels with supplemental DHEA and pregnenolone. Neurosteroids regulate a large part of your cognition, your well-being, your productivity, basically a lot of processes which are occurring in your brain. If you take exogenous testosterone, ultimately, neurosteroid levels start to decline. So please do yourself a favor. If you care about productivity, start supplementing with DHEA and pregnenolone. 25 to 50 milligrams DHEA per day, either the full dose in the morning, full dose in the evening, or splitting up the dose. Same for pregnenolone, 10 milligrams to 25 milligrams per day, either morning or evening, or splitting up the dose. You have to experiment a little bit, figure out which protocol works best for you and gives you the best levels of DHEA, DHEA sulfate, pregnenolone, pregnenolone sulfate, and all of the neurosteroids and sex hormone precursors that fall in between and beyond this kind of supplementation, right? Do your blood work so you can figure it out. Next on the list is human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG. Not only does HCG sustain testicular function, we do go on exogenous testosterone. Basically, long story short, exogenous testosterone downregulates the hypothalamic to the pituitary testicular axis and thus luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone basically come down to zero within a couple of weeks. And now intertesticular testosterone production and spermatogenesis shuts down. Luckily for you, you can replace the luteinizing hormone signaling with human chorionic gonadotropin. This way, intertesticular testosterone levels are somewhat sustained and spermatogenesis are, uh, let's say, towards you know, minimal fertile levels. This way, you can assure your legacy. If you're going to grind and create generational wealth, you need to make all this money, ensure that you have another generation after that. Your legacy, the second generation, will sustain the money that you make. And then by the time you retire, you have the third generation that's going to spend it, but you probably don't have to care by that point. And secondly, the adrenal glands are also responsive to luteinizing hormone and human chorionic gonadotropin. So maybe you don't even need DHEA and pregnenolone supplementation, albeit, I will tell you this, the older you are, even at higher dosages of exogenous HEG, you might still need towards the lower end of my recommendations regarding DHEA and pregnenolone supplementation to sustain neurosteroid levels. Keep this in mind. Thirdly, most importantly, the brain also responds to LH and HCG, especially in the hippocampus, which has the highest density of LHD receptors of the brain. The hippocampus plays a vital role in regulating learning, memory encoding, memory consolidation, and spatial navigation. So HCG use alongside of your exogenous testosterone, basically mandatory for testicular function, adrenal gland function, and the functioning of your brain. Animal studies show that exogenous HCG does have a neurotropic effect. I'll link them down below, very interesting reads. Now, I'll be the first ones to say that even at higher dosage of HCG for fertility protocols, let's say at 1,000 IUs three times per week, I don't notice any neurotropic effects beyond some of the neurotropic aids, which we'll discuss a little bit later. Um, but maybe after adding the exogenous testosterone again, maybe I'll turn myself into a million dollar per month business also. Nice. You never know until you try both in combination. So HCG, highly beneficial, 250 IOs to 500 IOs three times per week. Let's say in between your testosterone administrations, if you go with three administrations of exogenous testosterone on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you take your HCG, uh, let's say Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, subcutaneously. Next one, growth hormone, right? Purely for cosmetic aids, so you can look a little bit younger, fill in all of those wrinkles, on your face because you're grimacing and angry, looking at all of your spreadsheets because one month you didn't make as much gains financially as the previous month, even though income is usually seasonal, as every entrepreneur will confirm. So one to two I use subcutaneous before bed to improve sleep quality. We'll dive a little bit more into sleep a little bit later on, but that would be my administration route. Don't use growth hormone during the day because it does make you sleepy. It does induce sedation, but if you do want to use it for cosmetic benefits and to improve sleep quality before bed only. Now it gets interesting. Stress management with beta blockers, either 2.5 to 5 milligrams nabivalol upon waking. Nabivalol has a very long half-life and active life, so you don't need to dose that multiple times per day. Personally, I prefer nabivalol 5 milligrams per day to keep my heart rate down, remain my composure, 
reduce the stress, right? Don't have such a high response to adrenaline or norepinephrine when I do train um, for hypertrophy purposes later on in the day. This keeps my heart rate under control, also controls my blood pressure. But if you only want to use that once in a while to get yourself out of this fight or flight state, the sympathetic nervous system post-workout, I would rather look into five to 10 milligrams per panel post-workout. Let's say you uh, do most of your work during the day, then you have your workout. Again, you shouldn't train too high, but we'll dive into that a little bit later. You supplement or you take your propanolol post-workout to bring your back into this rest and digest state, right? Block the effects of adrenaline, norepinephrine. Um, I found this highly beneficial. Again, I discontinued the nabivalol, and now that might be one of the reasons why I'm always talking so fast. So take it for what it is. Um, if you need additional blood pressure management on top of your stress management in the form of a beta blocker, Look into 5 to 10 milligrams Cialis, either morning or pre-workout, or 20 milligrams to 40 milligrams Salmasartan upon waking. Again, if needed, check your um, blood pressure when supplementing beta blockers in. It's probably not even required to have additional blood pressure management in place. We all know that uh, grinding your socks off for financial reasons can increase your blood pressure because stress might be high. And especially if you have to deal with um, you know, high-ticket customers, or a very high value projects, right? look into stress management or blood pressure management. It will probably add a couple years on your life. Then we need to manage our estradiol beyond the exogenous testosterone, the DHEA, the pregnenolone, and the HCG. You can do that with methane and calcium deglucurate, over the counter supplements, which help with estrogen metabolism and estrogen excretion. So that's, uh, let's say, 100 milligrams methane in the morning and evening, and 500 milligrams calcium deglucurate morning and evening, or you go with an aromatized inhibitor. Again, do your blood work, see where your serum estradiol levels are at on this particular protocol containing dynomethane and calcium deglucurate. And if you still need estrogen management alongside of that, let's say 6.25 milligrams to 12.5 milligrams uh, aromacin exemestane two times a week, maybe three times a week. Blood work first, please. And if you want to turn in this HRT into HRT plus or plus plus, however you want to look at it, my recommendation would be to add in methylene inotate, primabolin, or the, going by the new name, remabolin, lower your testosterone dose slightly, so you stick with a one-to-one -one ratio of primo to testosterone. So if you were using, let's say, 250 milligrams of test, why don't we bring that test down slightly and go with, um, you know, 150 milligrams of test and 150 milligrams of primo per week. So instead of this previous protocol, your protocol would look something like this. Testosterone, any ester, 14.3 milligrams to 28.6 milligrams subcutaneous daily, or 33.3 milligrams to 66.7 milligrams subcutaneous three times per week in a one-to-one -one ratio with your prima ballin at the exact same dosages, obviously, right? Exact same injection frequency. And yes, you can mix your testosterone with your primo. You don't have to inject twice per day, right? So that will mitigate or negate the need for dynomethane, calcium deglucurate, or an aromatized inhibitor because primabolin or some of its metabolites inhibit the conversion of testosterone into estradiol by taking its place in the aromatized enzymes temporarily and thus managing serum estradiol levels. If you want to replace your primabolin with mastron instead, that's entirely up to you. Please do your research so you know what you're getting yourself into. This is basically cookie cutter HRT or HRT+. Plus. However you want to look at it, it should improve your motivation and your overall body composition. So the time that you do spend in the gym and on your diet is a little bit more effective, a little bit more beneficial. So you don't have to go crazy, super hardcore natural, and uh, thus take energy and time and efficiency away from your money-making capabilities, right? It's not cheating. You're just trying to focus your attention somewhere else and make training and diets a little bit easier, a little bit more manageable, so you can get more bang for your buck for all of the efforts and dedication you put into your physical well-being. I mean, the, the ROI of HRT, sweet as f I'll tell you that. Okay, let's move over to neuroplasticity and neurogenesis, which is often overlooked by all of the entrepreneurs. But if you can be ahead of everybody else regarding your brain health and your ability to learn something new and your overall cognitive abilities, you're going to destroy the competition, I guarantee it. First one being Cmax or Cmax, however you want to pronounce it. Honestly, I still don't know. Either way, Cmax, Cmax, it's a synthetically derived peptide from adrenocorticotropic hormone, which helps as a nootropic cognitive enhancer by improving memory and mental clarity. You can take 500 micrograms internasally 
morning and afternoon. It has a little bit of a stimulatory effect, so I wouldn't take it too late. Again, sleep quality needs to stay sustained for the best productivity. We'll get to that a little bit later. Or you can go with the subcutaneous administration round. Let's say 1,000 micrograms per day. And you can combine that with Selank or C-Lank, either the same day or alternating days, or one month on Sumax and one month on C-Lank. Right? Whatever you prefer. Personally, I like 500 micrograms Sumax internasally upon waking for a very quick effect. Right, Get it right into that nootropic state for good productivity. And then later in the day, sometime in the afternoon, 500 micrograms Selank subcutaneously. This seems to be the best for my productivity, but you're going to have to experiment a little bit, figure it out. Selank is a, a peptide derived from the immunomodulatory peptide Tuftsin, also a nootropic and an anxiolytic that improves focus and mental clarity, can also reduce anxiety. So if you have some strenuous work that you don't really want to do or you know, something very serious that you get anxiety from, look into Selank over Samax. I already have a lot of separate videos about Samax and Selank. Give them a watch regarding their benefits to mitigate post-exercise brain fog or to help with your libido or overall cognitive benefits that these nootropics have, right? Give them a watch if you're thinking about using them. Now, if you had a good response to Samax or Selank, but you want next level neurogenesis for the most amount of productivity you could possibly have, Look at the medications which are used to treat various neurological conditions in some countries on the world. Cerebral lysin is used to uh, treat Alzheimer's disease or recovery from stroke. Cerebral lysin is derived from pig brain tissue containing brain-derived neurotropic factor, glial cell-derived neurotropic factor, nerve growth factor, and ciliary neurotropic factor. Cerebral lysin is the Rolls-Royce of neurogenesis. 5 milliliters to 10 milliliters intramuscularly, either upon waking or before bed. It really depends on how you respond. Neurotropic aids usually make you sleepy, like neurogenesis can give you a little bit of brain fog. But some people notice that they get increased energy and maybe an, even an increased metabolic rate from their cerebral lysine administrations. Personally, I take 5 to 10 milliliters before bed. Courses can last anywhere between one month up to three months after which you have to consider how you want to proceed, right? You can't be on neurogenic aids continuously. Use them as needed. Uh, I used cerebralizin the last time, I think one and a half years ago, for one month, five to 10 milliliters before bed. I slept great. Post-exercise brain fog was completely negated. I got all of the cognitive benefits out of it, especially increased focus. And after one month, I felt that it was sufficient. After which I started looking into SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or serotonin modulators. These are known to potentiate the most amount of neurogenesis continuously. And you can take them orally, so it's a little bit more convenient than taking cerebralycin intramuscularly. Even though cerebralycin administrations, compared to all of the administrations that I've done over my life, completely pain-free. Cerebralycin goes in like butter. So I haven't used that for over a year, and now I feel, I'm probably after coming off uh, HRT protocols, now I feel that I'm ready for another course of cerebral lysin. I'll be fair, in the meantime, I did use fluvoxamine, which is an SSRI that potentiates a lot of neurogenesis. It's generally prescribed to treat conditions of obsessive compulsive disorder and social anxiety disorder. Um, as many of you were quick to point out, I don't suffer from either of those. My obsessiveness is mostly uh, perfectionism. I want these YouTube videos to be absolutely freaking sweet. So personally, I had a great experience running fluvoxamine for almost a year at various doses, building up slowly and then coming off cold turkey with tremendous, horrible, serious side effects. It's well documented on this YouTube channel. Give those videos a watch. Um, not to be taken lightly. Like SSRIs need to be respected. Um, don't take them like candy do a, a course of Samax and Selank, and then maybe a load of cerebral lysin. And then if you fall into the same boat that I was, I want continuous neurogenesis, looking to fluvoxamine or as an alternative, vortioxetine, Trintalex, which is said to be the most potent inducer of neurogenesis compared to all other antidepressants. Vortioxetine is a serotonin modulator and stimulator antidepressant medication uh, prescribed to treat major depressive disorder. Personally, after doing a lot more research, in the meantime, my preference would lean more towards vortioxetine over fluvoxamine. Again, there's something to say, and, and side effects 
of both of them. So please do your research. I haven't used the Vortioxetine myself yet, but next time, if I decide to go with a continuous neurogenic 8, it would be Vortioxetine. But stay tuned for a video comparing fluvoxamine to Vortioxetine in uh, the near future. Again, if I decide to get my hands dirty, uh, you never know, right? So a couple of things that are debatable, though, regarding neurogenesis. I mean, if you do the research and you go to examine.com or other um, review websites, you see that fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil are neurogenic. Curcumin extract, neurogenic. Blueberry extract, lion manes, mushroom extract. Rhodiola rosea, bocapa monieri, uh, N-acetylcysteine even. Ginkgo biloba, alpha-lipoic acid, green tea extract, the epigallocathidin gallate, and even lithium and dihexa, another nootropic which we'll discuss in part two, three, or four. And to be fair, we should even add human chorionic gonadotropin to this list. But from my personal experience, having used um, all of these in various dosages and various protocols, I will tell you that Cimax, Selang, Cerebrolysin, and Fluvoxamine are way more potent for neurogenesis. I noticed very tangible, very measurable effects regarding my cognition, state of well-being, um, mitigating post-exercise brain fog, and overall productivity that came after the use of these neurogenic aids compared to, uh, well, the ones that I just listed. So take it all with a grain of salt. You'll still have to figure it out for yourself. I will tell you this, a combination of nabivalol and fluvoxamine, absolute bliss. Absolutely nothing could phase me. Absolutely nothing. Okay, let's move over to diet. A couple things you can look into. Intermittent fasting, one meal per day, ketogenic diets, or low glycemic index diets. Basically, they all revolve around carbohydrates and caloric restriction. The most focused you'll ever feel is on some sort of a ketogenic diet that could even be a carnivore diet, even though I do feel that vegetables are a little bit better for intestinal health, but right, you guys can start debating that in the comment section. I'll leave it up to you, right? All comments fuel the algorithm. Personally, I would say that the ketogenic diet is superior for productivity out of all diets. I've been following a ketogenic diet since I think like 20 years old, 22 years old, somewhere around those times. Um, and I wouldn't have it any other way, right? I'm highly productive, always in this ketogenic state. My brain is burning ketones over glucose. And even though glucose might fluctuate throughout the day, if I have a little bit of fruit post-workout, I'm mostly in a ketogenic state. And since ketones are being produced in the liver from a freshly liberated body fat stores or for whatever uh, fat I have in my diet, continuous cognition. Now, is a ketogenic diet good for um, overall endurance or overall strength? Probably not. I'll be the first one to say that a diet rich in carbohydrates is better for endurance and better for strength. But we're talking about entrepreneurship here. And I will tell you that out of all the guys that I know that are really into fitness, but also into entrepreneurship, the large majority of them are on ketogenic diets but you might have to make some sacrifices regarding your training intensity which is actually what you should be doing you should be training with some reps in reserve because training to failure even if you make it those the cerebral license which ultimately will just result you into training even harder than before leave a couple reps in reserve the last couple of months that i've been off hormone replacement therapy i've been you know not doing sets to failure and definitely not beyond failure because the recovery capability simply isn't there, two to three reps in reserve. And my cognition is certainly a lot better than taking hormone replacement therapy or a actual steroid cycle, cerebral lysine on top of that, and training my balls off. <laughs> and besides the brain fog that I had, I was also physically tired. And now I don't have brain fog and I'm not physically tired, allowing me to stay very cognitive and highly productive when I'm supposed to work. So again, sacrifices have to be made in the gym for you to gain additional revenue and overall cognition regarding your entrepreneurship, right? You can still develop a great physique, sustain your health, have a great time in the gym with a couple of reps in reserve. Will you get the same satisfaction out of it? Probably not. I'll be the first one to say that training is not as enjoyable right now. That aside, the weight training, right? Training three to five times weekly, progressive overloads, but don't hammering your central nervous system. And again, if you do train a little bit harder, look into something like propanolol 
or Nabivlol to uh, get you back into your wrist and digest state faster. On top of this, I would do some fasted cardio, 20 to 30 minutes zone two cardio daily upon waking, right? For improves, improved fat utilization, insulin sensitivity, enhanced stamina endurance during your workouts, appetite regulation, and during the time that you're doing your daily fasted cardio, watch some YouTube, anything that stimulates you at the start of the day that doesn't have to do with actual work. This way you feel a little bit more relaxed, right? You can bring your stress levels down and you can burn some fat in the meantime and also do something for fun because after fasted cardio and your breakfast, you're there to make money. Make sure that you don't have any distractions. Make sure that you focus your entire day on creating financial freedom, financial security, generational wealth so you can kick back, relax, and retire early. There's only so many years you can grind, right? 10 years, 20 years, maybe 25 years. After that, the grinding should be done and you should be able to relax because you're going to neglect a lot of things for entrepreneurship, right? Don't neglect your sleep quality. Don't neglect your physical being. That needs to be on par 24 7. Every single day, you should sleep properly and focus on your physique through diet and training and maybe some supplementation, which we'll get into. But you might still be busy, right? So throughout the day, you get all of your work done. Don't be distracted. If you want to do something distracting, do it during daily fast cardio or when you're cooking meals. So let's go into the breaks. When you're cooking meals, do something else besides work. Everybody needs a mini break throughout the day, right? You can't be highly productive and cognitive for hours in duration. Unfortunately, even if you take all of the neurogenic and uh, medications to help you with productivity, you're still going to take breaks. Daily fasted cardio, cooking and eating meals are all the breaks that you're going to get for leisure activities. And however you want to spend your leisure activities, right? you can watch some YouTube videos while you're doing daily fast cardio and cooking and eating meals. But if you want to do something else, um, feel free to do so. That's entirely up to you. The rest of the time, you should be highly productive, but you still need breaks for your utmost cognition because after 45 minutes to 60 minutes, your inspiration and your creativity usually starts to run out. So cooking meals allows you usually for a 20 to 30 minute break, depending on what you're eating and your diet strategy. Personally, I prefer to make all of my meals fresh. So I have my daily fast cardio. I do some emailing and uh, work before that time, some emailing and work after daily fast cardio. Then I have my breakfast, right? It takes about 20 minutes to cook and eat. And then I grind for two, two and a half hours with maybe a small break in between making a couple more meals throughout the day. Look into afternoon power naps. Could be 10 minutes to 30 minutes every single day. Now we got our daily schedule pretty much dialed in. You can still work six, six and a half days a week, which is what I do. That's the part, that's the life that you chose when you went with self-employment. Then once a week, you have your date day or your bro day. That's an afternoon every single week as the break of the mononymy that is work. And it should still be fun because you should monetize your hobbies and passion. This is what I did and so many people do having a YouTube channel. So still have half a day where the phone is off. You don't work. You don't focus anything on money making. You're spending time with your wife or your girlfriend, your significant other, your partner, or your bros if you're currently single, right? You still need to maintain your relationships. So make sure you set some time aside for it. Then you need to take a micro holiday, which is a long weekend, let's say Friday to Sunday, three days, once every month. If you want, combine that with the last weekend, the last long weekend of the month, so you can look into your financials and uh, do a little bit of debauchery with all of the money that you just made. Look into a power holiday, a one week holiday, where you do serious sightseeing, uh, doing a lot of cool stuff. I mean, if you're stuck in the office, you're probably not going to be moving around much. Even if you do daily fasted cardio and uh, you know some sort of weightlifting for physical health, you're not moving around that much unless you have a standing desk and a treadmill. So you end up walking and walking and walking, but still ending up in the same place. Either way, do a power holiday where you sightsee, get some new experiences, right? Visit some temples, some mountains, some interesting places, do some fun activities so you can stimulate your brain with something new and exciting besides all of the entrepreneurial work that you were doing uh, leading up to that power holiday. It can be two to three times per year. Uh, it should be a long weekend or a week, let's say eight days, you know, uh, stick on a Friday or a Monday if you can. Then do a proper holiday 
once per year, three to four weeks, where you completely take off, right? Sometimes you won't be able to afford it. Sometimes the business is so demanding that you can only take two to three weeks or maybe only two weeks, right? But do a proper holiday where you just relax, right? Turn off the phone, um, delegate all of your work to somebody else, tell them to do it for you. You can be angry at them for doing such a poor job replacing you when you get back, but not a holiday, dude. No, chill. Chill the fuck out. Really, you need, we all need a break, right? It can be two weeks, it can be four weeks. It's entirely up to you and how demanding your business is. But you need to unwind at least once per year and not give a f- <laughs> Really, you can give a f- the other 50 weeks or 48 weeks and then a couple of power holidays and long weekends uh, deducted from that. Sometimes you need to shut it off so you can appreciate the time that you have when working afterwards. And then take your sabbatical every 10 years, 20 years, right? You take six months to a year off. How it depends on your financial situation. The last time I took a sabbatical was after working for five years, working for somebody else as a financial business consultant. Luckily for me, that was during the last economic crisis and the business went belly up anyway. And I lost my job due to bankruptcy. I traveled to worlds for an entire year. It was great. I can still remember this period fondly, even though it's been um, over 12 years that I finished my one-year trip uh, backpacking through Southeast Asia and some parts of uh, Greater Asia. Absolutely great. And since I'm due for one, let's say, seven to eight years from now, um, I'm looking to take another sabbatical, basically retire by that time. These are the breaks that you get if you're an entrepreneur, really, really hammering in the daily fasted cardio and cooking your own meals. If you're too busy then um, hire a chef to cook the meals for you, but still take a break when you're eating. Right? Don't associate eating with work because um, by the time you do go out with your wife or significant other and you're still thinking about work, uh, it's not the best approach to sustain your relationship. Okay, last thing I want to highlight is sleep, but let's be fair, I already made a deep dive video series about sleep quality, so give those a watch. Otherwise, this video would be way too long and we already mentioned growth hormone in the cookie cutter HRT protocol segment. So let's leave it here. In the upcoming video, I'm going to discuss over-the-counter supplements, and we're going to break that down according to the neurotransmitter so you can optimize particular neurotransmitters to your desire. We're breaking down the acetylcholine, the serotonin, the dopamine, the GABA, the norepinephrine, etc. And then we'll do the same thing for the medications, the nootropic aids, the performance enhancing drugs, which I didn't include in this video. Yet, let's see, I'm sure there's going to be a couple comments mentioning what I forgot in part one, two, and three. So stay tuned, subscribe now if you're not subscribed yet. Man, I mentioned it three times in this video, but I really want to get to 100,000 subs ASAP. Do me a solid, subscribe, and tell all of your other friends who are entrepreneurs and interested in performance enhancing drugs, over-the-counter supplements, and medications for cognition to subscribe also. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find all of my sponsors and affiliates down below in the YouTube description section. If you can't find them there, head over to my website, vigorsteve.com. Bookmark that site. I've got a ton of free articles for your reading pleasure. You will certainly learn something new. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at vigorsteve. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A entrepreneurial stack, frontable bicep for you guys, minus hormone replacement therapy, you know, including human chorionic gonadotropin, not as productive as I would like to be, but at one point or another, my wife will be pregnant. I guarantee it. And then you're going to see some serious gains, both physically, emotionally, and financially. Stay tuned. For now, we're out of time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.